In this video, I want to introduce you to virtual services and talk about the most common ways that you can create a virtual service in DevTest Solutions. Now, the biggest benefit of creating a virtual service is the elimination of constraints in your testing and your ongoing development. Modern applications are more complex, and they often have multiple integrations with third-party applications or with other applications in your organization. So it's likely that whatever you're building, it's going to need to interact with another system. And it's also likely that that system might not be fully developed yet, or it's not consistently available, or it's a third-party system that doesn't support extensive testing, or maybe it charges you for each transaction. Each of these dependencies can become an obstacle to your own development process. Virtual services let you virtualize the behavior of a system and model a virtual service that can simulate the behavior of the live system during development and testing. And that eliminates the constraint and lets you shift your testing left in the cycle and continue on with your development. Service virtualization can create a virtual service from both available and unavailable services. So when a service is available, you can record live transactions between a client and a server and then create a virtual service from the captured transactions. When a service is unavailable, you can create a virtual service from other sources, such as request and response pairs, or a development specification like Swagger, OpenAPI, or a WSDL spec. So those are the three most common ways of creating a virtual service, from a recording, from request response pairs, or from a specification. When you create a virtual service from a recording, you're going to place a recorder in the middle of the transactions between the client and the server to capture those transactions that are passing back and forth. So the client is configured to send requests to the recorder instead of the live service, and the recorder is configured to capture those requests and then send them on to the server. The server then sends the response back to the recorder, that response is captured and then sent back to the client. And once this traffic is recorded, the virtual service can now take the place of the live system. Of course, you don't always have access to the live system. That's one of the constraints that we're trying to remove. However, if you have the request and response data, you can create a virtual service without ever accessing the live system. You can just drag the request file and the response file directly into DevTest Portal, and DevTest reads the files and then generates a virtual service based on the data in those files. But maybe you don't have those files either. Another option is to create a virtual service by importing specification files, like a Swagger, OpenAPI, or WSDL spec. And you can import the specification from your file system or directly from a URL. And once you have the specification in DevTest, you can then select the specific operations that you virtualize. You don't have to virtualize every operation in the spec. And no matter how you create your virtual service, your response data is typically a combination of randomized string data or hard-coded values. So DevTest also lets you edit the response data during and after the creation process to provide more meaningful data in your service and in your testing. So that's a high-level overview of service virtualization and the most common ways of creating virtual services in DevTest. There are additional videos that walk you through the actual steps of creating a virtual service for each of the methods that we talked about. And of course, there's always more information in the DevTest documentation. I hope you found this video useful, and thank you for viewing it.